Let's look at five ways to use outboard audio gear in your studio for recording and mixing. Sweetwater just sent me this Cranborn Audio 500 ADAT and a few 500 series modules. As we go through my outboard setup in SignalFlow, I'll show you a few features that make this thing so powerful. But no matter what outboard gear or patch bay that you'll be using, you're going to find the principles in this video very helpful. So let's get started. One of the first pieces of gear that many add to their studio is an outboard microphone preamp. When you're first getting started, you might use the built-in preamps on your audio interface, but outboard preamps are a good way to improve sound quality and introduce some variety to your toolkit. Before analog to digital conversion, the signal from your microphone needs to pass through a preamplifier to bring it up to line level. This means that the mic needs to connect to a preamp before being converted to digital by your audio interface. In my studio, the microphone lines are connected to the first patch points on my patch bay, just above the microphone inputs on my Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 interface. The reason I've arranged my patch bay like this is so that the microphones are normaled to the mic inputs on my audio interface, which simply means that when nothing is connected, the signal from the top jack will flow down to the bottom jack. This saves me the time of patching the microphones every time I want to use them. With this patch bay setup, the mics are connected to the interface preamps by default. But I want to use this Cranborn Audio Camden 500 preamp instead of the preamps built into my interface. So using a patch cord, I'll connect mic one to the input of the Camden preamp and connect the output of the preamp to input one on my audio interface. You may have noticed that the output of the Camden microphone preamp is directly above its input. In this case, the patch points are not normaled. Otherwise, it would create a feedback loop when nothing is connected. Instead of normaling these jacks in the patch bay, I've set them up in through mode so that there is no default connection. With the microphone connected to the outboard preamp and the outboard preamp connected to the audio interface, I'll set the input of the track in my DAW to input one, I'll arm the track, and I'll set levels on the outboard preamp until the meter in the DAW peaks at about minus 12 dB full scale. Many engineers will pass the microphone signal through an outboard preamp and through a few outboard effects before sending the signal to the audio interface to be recorded. Remember, alterations made to the signal before recording can't be undone, but that might be a good thing as it forces you to make a decision now rather than saving all of the decisions for the mixing process. If you're recording a vocalist, you could use a compressor or limiter to provide a zero latency monitor mix for the vocalist and to cut down the dynamic range before recording. This usually leads to a better performance because the vocalist will feel more comfortable hearing a compressed signal rather than hearing the dry input signal. The setup process is similar to setting up an outboard mic preamp. I'll take the microphone to the input of the outboard preamp just as I did before. This time, instead of connecting the output of the preamp to the audio interface, I'll connect the output of the preamp to the input of the compressor, then I'll connect the output of the compressor to the audio interface. If you've got an unresolved fear of commitment, no need to worry. The Cranborn Audio 500 ADAT chassis makes it possible to create a signal chain like this for the vocalist's headphone mix while recording a dry signal from the microphone preamp. That way you'll have a clean slate for mixing later on. There are even more ways to use outboard gear once everything is recorded in your DAW and you've entered the mixing phase. Let's say I want to use the outboard compressor from before, but this time I want to compress a signal that's already been recorded. In the DAW, I'll create a hardware insert. In Reaper, this is done with the reinsert plugin. Most DAWs have this capability, but the setup method will vary. I'm going to set up an insert send with output three on my audio interface and an insert return with input three. This means I need to patch output three of my interface to the input of the compressor and then connect the output of the compressor to input three on my audio interface. Each time you create an analog insert like this from your DAW, a digital to analog conversion is required. The interface converts the digital signal to analog, sends it to the analog compressor. The compressor compresses it and sends the signal back to the interface where it's converted from analog back into digital. So if you plan to use more than one piece of hardware, I'd recommend patching them together with analog patching rather than creating several inserts in your DAW to minimize the conversion stages required. You can even bypass the patch bay with the Cranborn Audio 500 ADAT by using these chain switches, which will route the signal from one module directly to the next within the chassis. 
With either method, you can string together several effects on the same hardware insert from your DAW. Just patch the interface output to the input of the first hardware device, and the output of the last hardware device will patch to the interface input. One of my favorite hardware insert chains is my guitar pedal board. Because my pedal board is made up of high impedance devices designed for instrument level signals, I use this radial EXTC module in my 500 rack. It allows me to connect my pedal board to my patch bay for sending pre-recorded DI guitar tracks through my pedals. Another common method for using outboard gear is an effect send and return. The insert method you just learned works very well for compressors, gates, EQ, and other processors that will be placed in line on a channel or a bus. An effect send and return is more suitable for time-based effects like reverb and delay. That's because it allows you to send multiple inputs to the same processor at various levels. Now, I don't have any outboard reverb plates or spring reverbs in this studio, but I do have this Blue Sky reverb pedal, and it sounds great. If you've got a chamber, spring, or plate reverb, you can follow these same steps. To set up an effect send, let's create a hardware send on the vocal channel to output four on the audio interface. Notice that I can control how much of the vocal is sent to this output, which will be helpful later on when dialing in the sound. With an effect like reverb, we'll create a send on each channel that routes to the input of the reverb, and the output of the reverb will return to a new track. Let's create a new track and set the input to input 4 on the audio interface. Over on the patch bay, we'll connect our FX send, output 4 on the audio interface, to the input of the reverb, which is connected using the radial EXTC. Again, I'm only using the EXTC because this is a guitar pedal. Then I'll connect the output of the reverb to the effects return channel, which is input four on the audio interface. Adjusting the send on our channel determines how much of the vocal is sent to the reverb unit, and we can even put a send on multiple tracks. The wet sound of the reverb comes back on this effects return track, which can also be adjusted using the fader. Another cool feature of the Cranborn Audio 500 ADAT is that you can create an analog headphone mix from right here on the front panel using these mix and pan knobs. I can add the vocal mic compressor that we set up before and also mix in some reverb. All of this will be routed to the headphone output on the 500 ADAT or the headphone output on a Cranborn Audio cast box, which I might cover in a later video. Once your mix is nearing completion, you'll need to sum all of the individual tracks to a two channel left and right stereo file. If you've been in the recording industry for a while, you may have dealt with some of the summing issues that were associated with digital audio in the early days. The issues are far less severe in modern systems, but many still use analog summing when printing their mixes to stereo. Instead of using your computer's processor to crunch the numbers and create a stereo track out of the individual tracks, analog summing mixers will take the stems for each instrument or instrument group and sum them in the analog domain. There are plugins that emulate this, such as the Waves NLS nonlinear summing plugin, but the Cranborn Audio 500 ADAT lets you do the real thing with top-notch converters and analog gain. First, I'll create a hardware output for each group of instruments. I've got eight channels with the 500 ADAT, so I'll divide the instruments into four stereo groups. The first group will be the drums. I'll route the drum bus in my DAW to outputs one and two on my audio interface. I'll route the next group, bass and guitars, to output three and four, vocals to outputs five and six, and effects to outputs seven and eight. You can split these channels up however you'd like. On the patch bay, I'll connect each of those eight outputs to the eight inputs on the Cranborn Audio 500 ADAT. Then I'll patch the main outputs of the 500 ADAT to input one and two on my audio interface so that I can record the stereo mix down. I'll dial in the final balance with these mix and pan knobs at the bottom of each channel, getting some last minute analog warmth and character along the way. In my DAW, I'll need to create a new track for the mixdown recording, and I'll set the input of that track to 1 and 2 because that's where I connected the outputs of the 500 ADAT. I'll arm the track and press record. The tracks will play out of their designated outputs, they'll be summed to stereo by the 500 ADAT, and recorded into this stereo track in my DAW. As you can probably imagine, it took me a lot of cables and a lot of time to set this up. In fact, I spent hours soldering my own cables until I finally gave up and decided to buy a few multi-channel snakes, but they aren't cheap. I wanted to show you how to connect outboard gear with analog cables, but there's actually another way that's far easier to set up. 
With the Cranborn Audio 500 ADAT, I don't need any of these analog cables between the chassis and the interface. All I need are a few optical ADAT connections. These four cables allow me to patch digitally using the control app for my audio interface, no patching or analog cabling required for inserts, effects, or analog summing. There's a link in the description of the video so that you can pick up one of these for yourself. When you use that link, I'll receive a small cut at absolutely no extra cost to you. So it's one of the best ways you can support Audio University. Hit the like button here and watch the video that's on your screen now. I'll see you there.